that it's a great day when people are wearing stickers and buttons. That means there's something to talk about. We are very, very, very excited to be here this morning uh, for the official release of the City Schools 10-year plan. Um, I want to make sure that we acknowledge the many, many partners uh, and supporters we have in the room this morning. This is a monumental effort. It is a labor of love on behalf of the children of Baltimore City. And you can't do anything this big without the support and help of a lot of people. Uh, so I would like to acknowledge before we move into the official program, uh, our board members, uh, Commissioner Duke, our president, Commissioner Wood, Commissioner Cooper, and Commissioner Heck. It is because of their leadership and their vision uh, that we have been able to rally our staff, this community, uh, for the 10-year plan. So thank you on behalf of, of the staff. Uh, and you know I, I'm here to say thank you on behalf of the children. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, our elected official, officials who have been strong supporters of this vision for a better school system for Baltimore City. Uh, Delegate Kurt Anderson. Thank you. And Delegate Rosenberg. Thank you. And again, uh, you can't do this without a lot of folks rolling up their sleeves. And we have been blessed to have a wonderful partnership with the City Council, who have also been champions of a better school system for the children of Baltimore. So I'd like to acknowledge uh, one of the biggest education advocates in the city, Mary Pat Clark. Uh, com uh, city Council person, Bill Henry. <laughs> city Councilwoman, Sharon Middleton. And City Councilwoman, Ricky Spector. Uh, they have been great supporters. They've pushed us to push our thinking. And they've ensured that this plan represents uh, the best of what is possible across the city, not just pockets of the city or a select group of students. Thank you. Uh, we should also recognize other partners who have been instrumental in the development of the plan, the vetting of the plan, the support of the plan. Rod Easter, president of the Baltimore Building Trades Council. Mr. Easter, thank you. Our BEC partners, there are way too many BEC folks to acknowledge, but you have been great champions of this work. So a uh, round of applause to BEC. Uh, and uh, specifically, uh, our foundation partners who have also played a role in this work, Roger Shulman. Roger, are you here from the Fund for Educational Excellence? Thank you. And Laura Latuda, who is from the Goldsecker Foundation. The Goldsecker Foundation has invested in Baltimore schools, but has specifically invested in this school, Calvin Rodwell. <laughs> and lastly, uh, I'd like to also uh, recognize uh, just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful principal. Uh, Mary Booker. Mary Booker was my mentor when I was a principal. Uh, she has been uh, just a wonderful leader in the Baltimore school system. This community loves you. Uh, you have loved on this community and we just thank you so much for your leadership here at Calvin Rodwell. And I think, uh, I think Mary is going to, to give a shout out to some of the specific Calvin Rodwell parents. She didn't want me to take all the thank yous, so I'm going to leave a few uh, for her. So we're going to, oh, good morning. I want to also acknowledge Commissioner Sauls who just joined us. Thank you for being here. Uh, so we're going to go on and get started. We have a very exciting uh, program. Uh, this is a great day in city schools. Uh, Dr. Alonzo just finished talking to all of his principals, and we are looking forward to the day where children walk into a building where there are computers and there's lighting and there's windows that open, 
and where children don't have to sit in classrooms with mittens on because it's cold outside, or they're not asking if they can wear their swimsuits because it's too hot in the building and they're looking for a uniform pass. So we are just looking forward to a day when every single solitary child in Baltimore City has a learning environment that they deserve. And as I said, this could not happen without the vision and the passion of our superintendent, Dr. Alonzo. Uh, we so appreciate him giving, empowering us to, to do this work. So this is a great day. We have a lot of work ahead of us. We're excited about the work. We embrace the challenge. Uh, to take this vision into reality. So I'm going to turn the program over to Leon Caldwell, who's a fifth grader, and Desmond Nelson, also a fifth grader here at Calvin Rodwell. Good morning, my name is Desmond Nelson. And my name is LaVon Caldwell and we are proud fifth graders of Calvin Wildwell Elementary School. We would like to thank Mayor Rawlings Blake, Dr. Alonzo, Board President Neil Duke, the, the Governor's Office, Senator McFadden, members of the City Council Bill, the Baltimore Education Coalition, members of the press, our principal, Ms. Booker, and every teacher, parent, and student here today, we stand together to hear a plan for Baltimore City students to finally receive the school buildings that we deserve with the technology we need to get ahead. As you know, the holidays are quickly approaching for us. For us, a new school building would be the greatest gift of all. Thank you for coming together and showing that you believe in us. Welcome to Calumbaro Elementary School. And now we are proud to introduce our principal, Ms. Booker. Good morning. Good morning. Guys, you shocked me. I didn't know you were introducing me. <laughs> um, good morning to everyone that's here. Tisha has um, acknowledge some of you, but I would like to say um, Dr. Alonzo, Mayor of Rollins Blake, Commissioner Duke, City Board Council, um, School Board Council members, City Council members, and all of you who are here today, our parents, our community stakeholders, we welcome you to Calvin Rodwell, one of the excellence, schools of excellence in Baltimore City. It is indeed a great privilege for me to stand here with this momentous occasion to have all of us under one roof where we're thinking about having better schools for our children. For those of you who've been here to Calvin Rockwell before or who've heard about us, you've heard that we have exceeded our capacity by at least 119%. Teachers do a great job every day. Children do a great job every day. But what a wonderful job we could do with this 21st century plan if we had a school that students could come to and do all of the things that Tisha talked about, but in addition had for us a culinary program where there will be a kitchen, where there will be nutrition, where there will be some other things, science labs, technology labs, and the 21st school where students we know, young toddlers, are addicted to iPads. So what does that tell us about the way that children learn today? We need to have virtual schools. We need to have a lot of other tools that we can offer to our young people so that we could close the, the um, gap for the achievement of our students. We know that there are high expectations that we talk about the Common Core curriculum and what it means for us closing that gap for our students in the United States. We want to make sure that with the new schools and the environments that we offer those opportunities for our youngsters so that they will exceed in every capacity without limitations and in schools where they may help to design those schools. A 21st century cutting edge school, Dr. Alonzo, we would like to be on the list. We hope that we are one of those schools that will be on the short list, not just the list. We know about the 10 year plan, but we wanna know if we're gonna be on the short list. And so in this room, we have some community partners who partner with our school, and I'm gonna start with the 100 black men. I see Mr. Ray Lucas, who's in the background, and also our um, chief over here, who comes out every week and mentors to our students, so he's here with us. We see Laurie Latuda, who's from the Gold Sucker Foundation. We all see Kelly Carroll and um, Ms. Brooks from Child First and some others. Our parents are in the background, but parents, I want you to give a shout out and let us know you're back there. Lots of parents. 
and community. I can't see everyone who's here to represent our school, but I want you to know that we have a well-supported parent group and community group who's vested in this community. This community is primed for revitalization. And we know that where there's great schools, wherever there's a great school, you can draw people to the community. So the 21st century plan that I'm hoping to hear more and more about, we attended, many of you have attended sessions like I have on um, the Jacobs Report to find out what does that mean for our school, what are the conditions of the school, and we know about them. So we want to make sure that every person who is vested every person who's here, that you help us with rallying all of our community members when we go down to talk about what we need in Baltimore City, that we can talk about there's some pockets of excellence, but it can be better with a school that's a 21st century cutting edge school. So I'd like to welcome all of you here today and just let you know that we love this plan. We love what we hear about it. We want to know more and more and more and want to fight for those dollars to come to Baltimore City. But, um, the mayor said that we want to grow our own. We want to grow our own. And then growing our own, we want to grow our own schools, talk about what that school, um, what those schools should look like, and make sure that we make that a reality for our two youngsters who are sitting here and the youngsters who are to come in the future. So welcome and thank you. And Dr. Santa Lisa, I didn't forget to pass on you. Told you, some excitement in the room. Uh, I'd like to uh, pause just a moment and acknowledge uh, Senator Bill Ferguson, who I think just walked in, also a great champion for Baltimore City and the 10-year master plan. Are you here, Senator Ferguson? Okay, great. Come on in. We need to give you a pen. Good. All right, next on the agenda is Leon Pryor, who is a teacher here at Calvin Rodwell Elementary School. Good morning, assembled guests. My name is Leon Pryor, Jr., and I am a kindergarten teacher here at Calvin Rodwell Elementary Yay! School. Yay! Some of you may remember me as the Chugga Chugga Choo Choo yeah. conductor from the BEC action on October the 16th. And it was on that night that we took a ride on the Block Grand Express on its way to Transformation Station and took a look at the current plights of the Baltimore City Public School buildings and the hardships our students face with the deplorable conditions of the, their learning environment. Now, I'm a product of the Baltimore City Public School Systems, completing my high school experience at the wonderful Baltimore Polytechnic Institute. <laughs> it was from... <laughs> it, it, it's all right, it's all right, uh, Mr. Anderson, it's all right. It was from these experiences that I was able to see the unpardonable conditions our students face, from having one room de designated for the gym, the cafeteria, and the auditorium, to pieces of ceiling tiles falling from the ceiling during scheduled classes, to uh, heat not working in a specific part of the building, to oversized class sizes, and little to no room to adequately teach the students. It is and it was quite evident that our students deserve more. I chose this teaching profession because nothing gives me more joy than that slight smile on a child's face when they understood what you taught them. And as teachers, we are cultivating young minds to become the next lawyers and doctors, nurses and teachers. And it, it is almost impossible to do so with some of the building conditions we currently have in our district. Uh, and so I stand in front of you today asking that we come together for the betterment of the children of Baltimore City, the children that soon and very soon will be coming into power and taking over this great city of Baltimore. It's these children that will soon be setting, sitting in these very seats making decisions for the generation after them. Now, what do we want to show them? We want to show them that with a little hard work and a lot of determination, that you can make a difference in your society. Now, to all of my fellow teachers here at Calvin Rodwell and to the surrounding city of Baltimore, we have already won over $150 million for school construction, and while we are taking an important step today, we have not yet arrived at Transformation Station. It is incumbent upon us as teachers to continue to lead the charge for the new school buildings, and my call for all of you is that this need, uh, you join us in Annapolis to fight for the funding we need to rebuild our schools. Again, I ask and I say to the teachers here, to the teachers in Baltimore City, what will you do? Thank you.
Amanda Richardson. I'd like to call up Amanda Richardson. She's one of the parents of a student here at Calvin Rockwell. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm a little nervous. My name is Amanda Richardson. I was a Calvin Rockwell student 20 years ago. Wow. I now have three boys, um, Damon, Deshaun, and Davon. They are here now. I've lived in this community all my life. I've seen every change that there was, and I'm still waiting for things to change for the better. Um, when I attended Calvin Rockwell, the number of students were appropriate for the size of the building. However, I am proud to say that our community is growing, and this outdated facility does not fit our needs of the um, children. As you can see, I'm a small person with a big personality, and my boys are the same exact way. <laughs> However, my boys are confined by the limitations of an outdated school facility. Despite the great work of um, my youngest son, teacher, Mrs. Shear, the tables are too small. There are eight children to a table. And my son, Damon, Mr. Bo, the second grade class, he shares a cubby with two other children. And as boys, they need space. They need their comfort zone, and they do not have that. Our school building should respect the care that our teachers have for our children and the worth of our children themselves. Finally, a few weeks ago, a family member asked me where was I planning on sending my kids to middle school because of all the work that I've done here. It kind of terrified me because I just didn't know, like, the future for them. So I don't want to see all of the great work that the teachers and myself have put into education disappear in middle school. I am not the only parent who feels this way. I'm just the only one who's able to speak at this time. Amen. This plan is for all of us and for the future of our children. Thank <coughs> you. I'd like to call up, up Reverend Dr. Donald Sterling from the New All Saints Catholic Church. My sisters and brothers, good morning. Good morning. New All Saints Church and Calvin Rodwell School share a common view along the Liberty Heights corridor. And the New All Saints Church is celebrating its 100th year in this community. And <laughs> among the blessings that are part of our experience is that we are also a build church, a church committed to leadership in this city and to the betterment of all citizens and the opportunities to work together collectively. The current construction of a new supermarket across the street, the opportunity at hand for the enhancement and stabilization of our local retail center are all obvious signs of new life in this community. And the day-to-day -day educational and social development that takes place here at Calvin Rodwell are additional signs of promise and blessing. Education is a God-given right to every human being. As investment is made in merchandising, should not investment also be made in our children's development, their education, and centers of learning. Calvin Rodwell School, we're glad to say, boasts an unsurpassed culinary arts program, especially unique to the elementary school level. However, this program, as well as many other educational offerings here, is limited. As has already been shared by our principal, 119% over abundance of students. That's, uh, that's, that's heavy. Beyond Calvin Rodwell campus, there loom serious concerns, such as those just shared by our parent before me. Middle school and high school educational decisions, concerns for ongoing learning, concerns addressing well-equipped schools that offer superior technology instruction, first class mathematics and science programs, and personal skills development and enhancement opportunities. Safe streets and neighborhoods, well-maintained educational environments are all necessary in the development 
a balanced, responsible, proud, and stable individuals and communities. Adequately designed and maintained environments are necessary ingredients for student achievement and well-being. Well-designed and maintained and managed environments undergird vibrant student and teacher interaction and reinforcement of learning, achievement, satisfaction, and success. One of the things that I think is going to be a challenge for us is the realization that all living things must change. Look at your bodies, for example. <laughs> Some changes are welcomed. Some changes we detest. But all living things must change. If Calvin Rodwell and other schools in Baltimore City are to heighten what is already happening that is positive and constructive, then change is a part of what our future engages in. Parents, do you desire greater opportunity for your children? If the students were all here, I would ask, do you want the best to be the best that you can be? Yes. Progress takes sacrifice, open minds, willing hearts, and commitment. And it is best achieved when we are committed to the common good. Let's seize the moment. Let's make the best of this adventure. Let's turn it into a win for all of us. We must commit ourselves to working together and to focusing on a new and greater Baltimore school and educational community. Yes. Clean, well-equipped education centers offer hoped for and talked about possibilities. Functional community school relationships and blooming increase as regards standards of excellence. Change, as we know, is not always easy, but change is necessary if we are alive. Let us sacrifice together with and for each other. A greater and brighter educational future is attainable for our children, and our decisions, our attitudes, and our collective commitment today will go a long way towards the making of tomorrow's future leaders, healthy, educated, and responsible adults and citizens. Let us work for our children and the best of our communities. God bless you. Thank you. I'd like to call up Chair, Chairman uh, Neil Duke, Chair of the Board of School Commissioners. Uh, I want to thank you for your leadership, for your support. You are such an inspirer, and we are so happy to be able to bring this forward on behalf of the School Board of Commissioners. Thank you, Tisha, and the check will be in the mail. <laughs> I do have that power, I think. Which, which, which check? Mm. I truly would like to echo the sentiments of Tisha Edwards with respect to the thanks and the acknowledgments to everyone here in this room. All of you are vital players in this process, and to identify one would be to the exclusion of others, and I simply can't do that. But know that your presence here today is truly and deeply appreciated. And I can look over the room and folks like B.B. Verdere and, you know, I just well up with pride over the amount of work that it took for us to get to this point. And we know that each of you in your own respective way has done so much to help this day come to fruition. So my thanks to each and every one of you. I'd also like to echo the sentiments of acknowledgments to our students. Um, both Leon and Desmond, who are here in a representative capacity. Uh, but it reminds us all that our mission isn't about the pleasure of we as adults. Our mission is about Leon and Desmond. They concluded their statements with the remark, and I made a point of writing it down. 
I forget which one of you young men uh, said the statement, but new school buildings would be the greatest gift of all. Now, folks, we just, many of you, I guess, survived what they call Black Friday here throughout the country, right? Where folks were rushing around, breaking their necks, putting their health in jeopardy to try to get a few trinkets for the upcoming holiday season. But when our students talk about the greatest gift of all, having a facility that respects them and that they can learn and engage in the highest calling for any of our students, which is to promote their own education. That's what this season is all about. That truly is what this season is all about. So let me just kind of conclude on this note. Over the course of the last handful of years, we've really changed the conversation. We've shifted the paradigm when it comes to the conversation about the school district. We're now seen as a district on the rise throughout this country. And that's on the backs and the burden and the sweat equity of our principals, our teachers, our staff members, our very fine superintendent, but perhaps most of all to our students and to their benefit. They have lifted this district in a very large sense into a district that is now the district that's very much in demand from other districts wanting to know how we're doing so well. But despite the fact of our academic successes over the last handful of years, there's one part of the story that has not changed, and that's the story of our facilities, of our buildings. Now, it's pretty hot in here, right? Mm -hmm. This isn't the only room in our many, many multiple facilities that's too hot, that could be too cold, mm -hmm. where things are falling apart. I don't want to wax poetic, but this is very much the tale of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Too hot, too cold, things are breaking apart, and we, except, uh, unlike the story of Goldilocks, we just never get it quite right. Mm -hmm. There are too few facilities in our portfolio that have that quality of having it just right, perfection. But with the advent, now the announcement of our 10-year plan, we hope to address these deficiencies in a bold and um, very um, innovative way. So with that, today isn't the day that we're going to take a victory lap. It isn't the day for us to get on the proverbial um, fighter jet and suggest that we have mission accomplished. But today is very much a day that we can celebrate our solidarity. The fact that there's so much talent in this room, that there's so much resolve in this room to getting this done now. Listen, folks. We may be around as adults for a handful more years. You know, some of us will be around 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Hopefully in another decade or so, I'll be in uh, Councilman Specter's seat. I'll have that nice rocking chair all to myself. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to visit, so you guys will have to invite me back. But for our students, a year is too long to go without a, a, a facility that respects them. A decade is too long. We have, we have to hustle, folks. We have to get this right. There's no more time to waste. This is the year. And no is not an acceptable answer. Right. Right. I'll leave it with that. And again, our students, I think they did a remarkable job. A new school building is the greatest gift of all. We're going to make it happen for them. Thank you very much. Of course, I, I take pleasure in uh, introducing uh, Dr. Alonzo. I didn't realize on the present on the agenda. I kind of skipped over you and went right to Neil. So I apologize. Uh, but I'd like to bring you up to give us an overview of the 10-year plan. Thank you. I was, I was signaling that she skipped over me again and called the mayor up. <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't do that. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, I, I want to thank staff who work so tirelessly 
to come up with a set of recommendations that were incredibly hard to make. And uh, there are too many to think, but uh, thank you. Uh, I also want to thank the person who was principal of this school when I became superintendent in Baltimore, Sandra Adams. I saw her when I walked in, so I want her acknowledged as well. Okay. We, we all stand on the shoulders. Uh, people have been so eloquent and so right that uh, anything I might say is, is really redundant right now. So I'm, I'm going to uh, skip over the four pages of talking points that I was given <laughs> in giving the uh, overview of the plan and just, just get to some bottom lines and, and then you know, let the mayor come up, which is that what we want is to ensure that all our students, all of them, are in 21st century learning environments all of them. We want to make sure that the district in 10 years reflects the city in 10 years rather than look back on what the city was 40, 50, 60 years ago. And there have been enormous <coughs> changes and those changes have not been manifested in our facilities not only in terms of what is there for our children to work with in order to learn, but also in reflecting what's happening around movements in neighborhoods, demographics, shifts. A school like this is at what? 119% utilization. Uh, 20 years ago, that was not the case. So this plan, it's really about looking forward it's a reflection of the fact that we have now been growing in enrollment over five years, five years in a row, while at the same time over decades we have a much smaller city and school system. At the end of the day, if the board approves the plan and if our partners are successful with us in making this happen, the capacity of the school system will go from serving 121,000 students today to 105,000 students 10 years from now. Our portfolio will change from 163 to 137 school campuses. The use of our buildings will go from 65% to 77% but what is most important is that every single one of those buildings will be equal to the need of our students. We will renovate or replace 136 school buildings, which is an immense goal for us, given what the history has been, but it has to happen. We will vacate 26 school buildings, and we know that communities will struggle with that recommendation, but it has to happen. We will work with the city and our communities in deciding the use of those buildings so that there will be addition to the life of communities rather than empty buildings. We will relocate 12 school programs to different buildings because they're necessary. We will close 17 school programs. In some cases, we will enlarge schools. This is a case where we need to enlarge these schools. In other cases, we will need to shrink them because there's a need for a school, there's a need for a program, but the demand at a point in time doesn't support the present utilization of the building. There will be many difficult decisions embedded in the recommendations, but all will place students in better buildings than they are today. Big picture. The plan is right for kids and necessary to take their progress to their next level.
This is about what is best for all our students throughout the district. They are, the sing, this represents the single largest investment ever in Baltimore City's children, and we need you all, and we are so grateful for your support in this. The recommendations are only proposed, only proposed. The plan is a working document, so it will change over time as the city changes, as the plan in the community deliberates. Execution of the plan will help create equal access for Baltimore City students and provide them with a quality learning environment students in other districts have. And I should tell you that every year we do tours of state legislators in our buildings and they always remark at the end, we didn't know it was like this. It is a product of community input. Community input will be ongoing through the implementation. Congressman Elijah Cummings has this saying that always, you know, makes me want to like, like which is that our children are the message we send to a future that we may never see. The buildings in which our children learn are a message we're sending to our children every day. And we have a huge opportunity now to send a message to the future and to children that we may never see. So this is, this, this is the beginning of immense amount of work. It's going to be hard. We need you in this because this is right for the city and this is right for our kids. And I want to thank everyone and I especially want to thank the next person on the agenda, uh, the mayor of the city, Stephanie rollins Black. Thank you. I think it's still morning, is it still? Oh, afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Shorter than usual. <laughs> you are. You are. I'm, I'm just teasing. You know, I, I really do want to thank uh, Dr. Alonzo and our uh, school board and the school commissioners uh, for inviting me to join you in what I believe is a tremendous day for our schools. I want to thank all of our uh, elected uh, partners. Uh, Delegate Anderson, you've been a tremendous uh, uh, fighter for Baltimore's kids. Delegate Rosenberg, I think this is your district, correct? Yes, he's, this is, he's, uh, you know, oh, uh, figures in your district, you would have a school that is overutilized. Uh, he is, a, he is a, a, a fighter for our kids as well. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Ricky Spector, this is uh, her area as well. As, is, which one is it? Is it your, your Councilwoman Spector's area, Councilwoman Middleton's neighbor, Councilman Henry's across the town. He's just here because he loves kids. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for, we we have uh, we have uh, former uh, delegate Walter Dean. Uh, good to have you here, uh, Senator Ferguson, uh, Councilwoman Middleton, uh, labor leaders, community leaders. You know, this is such a great day. Uh, for our city, and uh, when uh, Dr. Alonzo was talking about a f the, our children being a message, uh, that the the, uh, the quote from uh, Congressman Cummings, and it, it it made me think about my dad and all the work uh, that he did in his lifetime for our school system, at a time that he didn't even have any kids in the public school system, uh, and he certainly didn't have a grandchild at the time, who was a pro who is a, uh, a Baltimore City School student, but he was so determined that our kids, no matter where you live in the city, would have a shot, would have a chance, would have the same quality of education that helped him move from Poe Projects to Chairman of the Appropriations Committee in Annapolis. That same quality of education in buildings that we could be proud of. And I stand here proud to be his message to the future, determined that under my administration, we'll have new schools. Under my administration, I'm not afraid to make the tough choices, to stand up to lobbyists who are still mad at me, uh, because I said, you know, we're going we're gonna to put some money into this. We're going to make a decision 
to have a 140% increase in school funding. And I want to thank the members of the City Council because it wasn't, you know, many of you who supported this, it was not easy. It was not an easy task. Uh, but I know where your heart was, and that was to make sure that we did our part to ensure that there was construction money. Because we couldn't go to Annapolis and say, give me, if we weren't putting our part in. And that's what leads me to this, to this announcement today. We, this report uh, talks about not just where we are, but where we can be. You know, we, can't, we can have a funding stream. But if we go to Annapolis, our partners, with school buildings that are underutilized, some less than 50 percent, there's no way that they're going to support the growth. This is about pruning. I have a brown thumb literally and figuratively, so I don't know a whole lot about growing. But I do know that if, if you want to grow a bush, you've got to prune it. Prune it so it can grow. It, and you prune it because you, ha you have to give it an opportunity to blossom. And that's what we're doing here. We are going to close, and it's not going to be easy. The decisions that have to be made to close some schools is going to be rough all around because everyone has an emotional attachment, has a historic attachment, but we have to have an, a stronger attachment to these boys that are sitting right here yeah. than to the building. <laughs> so you have my commitment my continued commitment to work with you to get this done uh, with all the partners that are here under my administration with your help and partnership at every step of the way we will have a school system not just in the lessons but in the bricks and the mortar that reflects the greatness of the kids that attend these schools thank you so very much for all of your support We can't ask for much more than that. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Sorry, I have to leave. Thank you. Uh, next, we'd like to bring up to the podium State Delegate Curtis Anderson for District 43 and a champion of Baltimore City Public School System. With a theme song. He comes with a theme Bad to the bone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. There is so much energy here today, we can make this palpable and make it work. Did you hear what the mayor said? Her number one priority. Okay. You hear what the superintendent said? His number one? Of course it's our number one priority. I come to you today to let you know that this is the number one priority for every delegate, for every senator in Baltimore City. Yay. I want, where, where, did Dele, where did Delegate Rosenberg come go? Del, Dele, Sandy, come up here for a second. I, I want to bring Delegate Rosenberg up. And Senator Ferguson, where are you, sir? Bill, come here. I'm the chairman. I can tell him what to do. <laughs> so what? First of all, let me just say that um, in response to the uh, whoever it was that said they went to Polly, who was that? Hey, yeah. hey. Uh, Delegate Rosenberg went to Baltimore City College. Wow, that's correct. I went to Baltimore City College. Rod Easter, who was helping in this effort, went to Baltimore City College, as did. <laughs> Kurt Schmoke, Mayor uh, Schaefer, Governor Schaefer, and Elijah Cummings, Ben Cardin. So, go city. <laughs> go city. I bring that up for this reason. I bring that up for this reason is that we are all products of the Baltimore City public school system. Okay. Not, not, not for applause, not for applause, but because. We were sitting in the same two chairs that these young guys were sitting in 20, 30, 40 years ago. We didn't know what we were going to do or, or be, but the Baltimore City Schools guided us. They molded us. We had mentors. We had teachers. We had, you know, coaches, all who made us who we are today. And those things need to exist for these guys. Now, we know we got the teachers. We know we got the mentors, but we got to give them the facilities that they need. Now, recently, Governor O'Malley said he was so proud of the fact 
that for the last four years, Maryland has been number one in the country, in the entire United States of America, in education. But Maryland couldn't be number one in education if Baltimore City wasn't doing its job. The state of Maryland can only do as well as Baltimore City does, and that's why our state funding is important. That's why it's important for them to hear from people like you. Now let me call up two other people. I don't want to embarrass them, but Bibi, come on up here for just one second, please. Bibi Verdere. And this is going to be a big surprise to her, Raquel Rodriguez. Come here. Come here. What Dr. Alonzo's plan and the mayor's plan for our future is, is in this 10-year report. It's not going to cost a million dollars. It's not going to cost a hundred million dollars. This is going to cost billions of dollars. It's not money we can get in just one year or two years. It's money that we need to put together over a 10-year period. With the help of Senator Ferguson in the Senate, Delegate Rosenberg in the House of Delegates, we will do that. But it's the help of people like Bibi Verdere in the community and, and Raquel Rodriguez in the community pushing legislators that is really going to get the work done. Over the last four years, these folks, along with the Baltimore Education Coalition, along with folks like Bill with uh, uh, Bishop Miles right here, have shamed some legislators to make sure that education is our number one priority. It shouldn't need to be that way, okay? But we're going to now have to shame some legislators from other areas, from Montgomery County, Baltimore County, Howard County. Not shame them, but just let them know where we stand. We stand behind our kids because our education is first. Ms. Rodriguez will be out there. She put two buttons on me today. So I know she's going to be out there getting folks who aren't on our side yet. And Bibi, my goodness, she is one of the most understated, I mean, she's our secret weapon. <laughs> Bibi. Uh, she said, that's enough, but I'm serious. <laughs> she gives us information. And what do they say? Information is power. Information is power. And we want to use that information to grow our schools. Thank God for Dr. Alonzo and the mayor of Baltimore City working together. We haven't had this kind of cooperation between a mayor and the superintendent in a long time. And that's extremely important members of the school board who are now working to, as cheerleaders to make this thing pass. Uh, you heard Neil Duke earlier, but Mr. Heck is at every single delegation meeting. He's there trying to pump us up, get us going. And Bishop Miles, um, you can call me not any earlier now than 9 p.m. Okay. No more midnight calls, sir. Okay. So it's a team. But it's not just the folks standing here. It's everybody sitting out there not just talking to people who already think like we think, but talking to people around the state, explaining to them what our schools look like, what they could be in the future, and what the potential would be for our children to have these two young, man, two young men in about 15 years standing up here making the speeches. Instead of introducing us, you guys will be running the city, running the state, and probably running the school system. So thank you all so much. Miles, co-chair co of BUILD. Good afternoon. I, Good afternoon. I stand as a product of the Baltimore City Public Schools, uh, from a little school in East Baltimore where Clarence Blount was vice principal and Hattie Harrison was president of the PTA, and Clarence Du Burns was locker room attendant, when I was a little school called Dunbar. <laughs> As a founding member of the Baltimore Education Coalition, BUILD is here to stand with the mayor, Dr. Alonzo, and our BEC partners, Transform Baltimore, and the ACLU of Maryland, with parents, teachers, principals, and above all else, students to provide the best options and opportunities for all of Baltimore's children. We thank BEC, parents, teachers, principals, students who have gone to Annapolis year after year to both preserve and increase school funding, and who work diligently to pass the bottle tax. And special recognition must be given to the ACLU, who launched this campaign 
and to transform Baltimore, which helped lead the policy analysis, the studies, the monitoring, every step of the way. We stand in a historic moment, in biblical terms, a Kairos moment, where there's a perfect confluence of events, of people, and of circumstances that Baltimore has never had in regard to its school system. Never before have we planned to make such a significant investment in the lives of Baltimore's children. Two generations, 40 years is a long time to wait. This is long overdue, and I am glad that every segment of the community agrees that this represents an opportunity to provide new and improved buildings needed to transform education atmospheres for our children. It also represents the opportunity to rebuild neighborhoods with new school buildings as the hub and to create jobs for city residents. In the words of a mayor that I often fought with, let's do it now. M mayor Rawlings Blake, let's do it now. City delegation, let's do it now. City council, let's do it now. Greater Baltimore committee, let's, let's do, do it, it now. now. Parents of Baltimore, let's, let's do, do it, it now. now. We can do it for the sake of our children and for the future of Baltimore. going to have the la next to the last word. She's a parent and a member of the Baltimore Education Coalition. Thank you so much. It's never good to come behind the bishop. <laughs> but I'm going to do my best to share some of the information that I'd like to share from the Baltimore Education Coalition. I am so excited to be standing here at this moment and to be part of this amazing team. There are not many moments in your life when you realize you are standing on the edge of something great. But I must say, as a parent, at this moment, I am so aware that this is the time and that we are the team that can make this happen. I told Miss Mumby I wasn't gonna cry, but nevertheless, it is because we are standing on the edge of something great for our children. The BEC, the school system, our city, and our state, all of us standing together to make a difference for our children. I'm a parent leader who is a part of the Baltimore Education Coalition that is co-chaired by Jimmy Stewart of the Child First Authority and Yasmeen Mumby from KIPP. We are 30 member organizations. We are community members, we are parents, we are teachers and students. It is truly a coalition, an alliance for combined action. Two years ago, the ACLU, a BEC member, launched the Transform Baltimore campaign with the coalition because we believe that the children of Baltimore deserve great school buildings. At this time, I would like to recognize the members of the BEC who are standing behind me. I am a mother of three strong young men who are students in Baltimore City Schools. My oldest son is a budding artist, but there is no art studio in his school for him to go and let his creative juices flow. My middle son, who is a chef in the making, but in his school, there is no culinary arts program for him to experiment and create recipes. My youngest son just started school this year and his classroom is actually one of the better classrooms because the windows in his classroom actually work. Yeah, let that settle on you for a moment. Just <laughs> windows that actually open. It is because of them that I felt and still feel an overwhelming need to act. This is why and they are why I am still here. It's about not just telling my kids that I value them and love them, but showing them that through my actions, 
showing them that I am willing to show up and be present in this present moment in time at City Hall with 100 plus people, at Barclay Elementary doing the chugga chugga choo choo <laughs> on a school night with upwards of 300 people, just as we had before at the War Memorial with 650 plus people, and two years ago in Annapolis in the rain with upwards of 2,000 people. I will show up. This is the moment, and I am a part of the 3,000 people who will show up in Annapolis on February 25th to pass the Block Grant Bill. Because if we don't get this money, we won't have new schools. Our school buildings are in crisis. And at this unprecedented moment in our history, we have to heed the clarion call that demands immediate action on the part of the school system, the city, and our state. As a mother, I recognize that change is challenging, and as we move forward, it may be a difficult process for school communities to face. But there is nothing, and I mean nothing, that you fight for that does not come without a struggle. As a coalition, we applaud the district for working to create such a historic 10-year plan. Thank you, Dr. Alonzo. We understand both the necessity and the pain that comes with closing schools. At the end of the day, we have to remember that we are not just fighting for some schools, but every building in our school system to be renovated and rebuilt new 21st century school buildings that reflect the amazing vision that we have for all of our children. As a parent, I am com committed to be the best and seek out the best for my kids. For the BEC, this campaign is about what's best for all kids. And all of us need to remain focused on what is best for every child in our city. The BEC will continue to lead the campaign to assure that the full $2.4 billion need is met. The present moment, this is the time, but it will not be a re reality if we don't get the block grant bill passed. Without it, there are no new art rooms. There are no culinary, culinary kitchens. There are no windows that open, AC systems that work efficiently, state-of-the-art music rooms for our kids to become who we know they already are. Mm -hmm. I am willing to show up at this present moment and be a part of this team. I invite each one of you to show up with me in Annapolis on February 25th and join 3,000 parents, teachers, and students to move toward 21st century buildings right now. Thank you so much. a bigger word than thank you. It doesn't seem to convey the appreciation and the gratitude and the excitement of everyone in this room. But the only thing I can come up with is thank you. Let's do it now.